Yum, yum. This is going to be a quick video discussing some of the GL visibility options in Modo and how to customize them in order to speed up your workflow. So if you're anything like me, you'll probably find that you're constantly switching between default and wireframe or advanced. And you're also constantly switching the display type of background meshes. Maybe you want to make them invisible to isolate your foreground mesh, or maybe you want to set them to wireframe. And the quickest method to switch your GL view is to use the control to pie menu. So you can quickly switch to wireframe, switch back to default. But as you'll notice, there's one glaring omission. The new advanced type viewport shader is not there. So in order to switch to advanced, you actually have to go up here into the corner and switch to advanced. So that's a real slowdown of your workflow if this is a viewport type that you use a lot. And in order to control background meshes, there's another Pi menu which is mapped to control six. So using this, you can isolate your foreground mesh by making the background meshes invisible. And it's a toggle, so you can make them visible again by simply invoking the command again. You can also use the same as active. However, this isn't a toggle. It will basically only set the background meshes to be the same as the foreground meshes. It won't revert back. So for example, if I open the viewport properties and I make my inactive meshes to not be the same, so they're going to be displayed as wireframe, I can invoke the control six pi menu to revert back to same as active, but I can't switch out of it. So it's a fairly limited option. And finally, there's another set of shortcuts that I use all the time, and these are the numpad keys. So for example, if you hit zero on the number pad, you probably know that it will maximize and minimize your view. If you hit the period key, the full stop, it will switch between the camera and the perspective. If you hit the one key on the number pad, it will toggle between top and bottom. If you hit two, it will toggle between front and back, and three will toggle between right and left hitting the period key will bring me back to my perspective view and these are really useful shortcuts that i use all the time however there's also more shortcuts assigned to the four key which will switch you to shaded mode five which will switch you to texture six to reflection seven to wireframe eight to solid and nine to vertex map. But once again, you'll see that the advanced mode is not there. And in fact, nor is the default GL mode. So these shortcuts could actually be made to be much more useful in my opinion. So the first thing that I'd like to do is to edit this control to Pi menu so that it gives me access to the advanced GL shading mode. So I don't have to go over here in order to access it. So in order to edit this Pi menu, I'm going to first of all open the input editor to see which form the keyboard shortcut is opening. So if I just filter on the control keybind, I can go down to control two and see that it's opening the form called GL shading modes as a Pi menu. So I'll dismiss the input editor and now I'll open the form editor. And from here, it's simply a case of scrolling through until you find the correct form. They're listed alphabetically, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. GL shading modes, here it is. And if I expand it, you can see that all the options are here. Now, obviously, in order to add the advanced GL shading mode to this Pi menu, I'm going to need to remove one of the existing options. Now, I personally never use the solid shaded style, so I'm going to replace this one. It's really a matter for you to decide which one of these you can live without, but in my case, the solid is the one that I want to replace. So I'm going to select that in my form editor. And the important thing here is to look at what command is being fired when you select this option on the Pi menu. So as you can see, it's this command here. So what I need to do is to replace this command with the command that sets it to the advanced GL mode. So I'm going to hit F5 to bring up my command history. And I'm going to go and switch the viewport to the advanced shading mode. And you can see that that is the command that is fired. So let me select that. And what I'm going to do is simply copy this and then I'm going to dismiss my command history and I'm going to replace the command in the form editor. And I'm also going to change the label from solid to advanced. And having done that, if I now press control two, you'll see that the advanced viewport option has appeared in my control two Pi menu. So let's just put it to the test, switch back to default and then switch back to advanced. And you can see it's working perfectly. 
So having gone to the trouble of customizing this Pi menu, you probably want to find a way of preserving this customization so that you don't have to go through it all again every time you update Modo. And the way you do this is by saving a config fragment. Now I recommend that you do this from a fresh session in Modo. So if you've been working in Modo for a long time, I would restart Modo and then edit the Pi menu in the way that I've just shown you. Once you've done that, go to File, Config, Export, and we'll select the name GL Pi menu for our config fragment. I'll just overwrite the one I created earlier. And where it says fragments, just select forms from the menu and make sure to untick import resulting file. Just OK that. And that should export just that config fragment we've just created. And we can see if it's worked by going to the system menu and going to open user configs folder. And you'll see our glpymenu.cfg, which we've just created, should be in there. If you open it with a text editor and have a quick look inside, what you should see is basically some XML, which just defines that one form, which is displayed when you hit the control to pi menu. And the next thing I'd like to do is to assign some shortcuts to the number pad keys that are more useful to me. So I'm going to leave the 0, 1, 2, 3 and the period as they are because they're extremely useful. But I'm going to change the assignments for 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. And what I'd like to do is to use 4, 5 and 6 to switch between default, advanced and wireframe and 7, 8 and 9 to control the visibility and shading of my background meshes. So in order to do this, I'm going to go to the system menu once again, open the input editor, make sure I'm not filtering on any of the modifier keys, have it set to all, and I'm going to scroll down until I can find the number pad assignments. And you can recognize those because they've got these square brackets around the numbers. So I've got the four key shortcut selected here, and I want to change that to set to my default GL shading mode. So I'm going to hit F5 to open the command history. I'm going to switch to default, and then I'm going to select that command in the command history, and then just copy that to the clipboard. Let's just dismiss that, and then highlight the command here, and paste what I've just grabbed from the command history. And then it's simply a case of going through the list and just editing each shortcut as needed. So if I just select the next command in the list for the number five and I open my command history, let's switch to the advanced shading mode and let's just grab that command, paste it in to the shortcut and then select six. I'm going to switch to my wireframe. Let's open the command history once again. Let's grab the command that's relevant, paste it in here. And what I'd like to do with the seven, eight, and nine keys is to control the shading and visibility of background meshes. So I'll start with seven, and what I'd like to do there is for that to set background meshes to be the same shading as foreground meshes. So if I put my cursor over the viewport and hit the O key, I'm just gonna toggle this command here, which is make inactive, same as active. I'm just gonna toggle it on and off a couple of times dismiss the popover, open the F5 command history, and I can see the commands are here, which is view 3D, same as active false, and same as active true. True is the one that I want to start with, so I'm just going to copy that. Let me just move this to one side, and I'm going to paste that into my number seven slot. I'll grab the false command, and I'll paste that into number eight. And that just leaves the number nine on the numpad still to assign. And what I'd like to do with that is to toggle the visibility of background meshes to either make them invisible so I can isolate just the foreground mesh or visible again. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to go about it slightly differently. So if I hover my cursor over the viewport and hit the O key to bring up display properties, you can see that if I toggle this make inactive invisible on and off, what I get in the command history is a true or false. Well, that isn't going to toggle between one state or the other. If I copy these commands, it's either going to set one state or the other. That's not what I want. In order to get a toggle, I'm going to have to find out exactly what happens when I use the control six pi menu to toggle between visible and invisible. So let's just filter the input editor on what happens with the control key. And let's scroll down and locate control six, which is here. 
and that's background mesh display. So once again, I'm going to go to system and open the form editor. What I need to do is to locate that background mesh display form. So let's just scroll down through the list until I find it. And here it is, and I can expand it. And if I look at the invisible command, I can see the command that's being fired is this. So you can see that because it's got this question mark and this plus sign, that is what's creating the toggle. So let's just copy this command and go back to all our modifiers and let's locate number nine on the numeric pad. And here it is. And I'll simply paste that command in there. And now I can dismiss my input editor and my command history. And it's time to put my shortcuts to the test. So if I hit four, it should switch to the default mode. Five switches to advanced. Six switches to wireframe. And if I switch back to default, I'm going to test my other keys. So if I hit eight, it should turn my background meshes to wireframe. Seven should make them same as active. And nine should toggle between invisible and visible. Everything seems to be working perfectly. And once again, I want to export these shortcuts as a config fragment so that I don't have to go through all these steps every time I update Modo. So I'll go to File, Config, Export, and I'm going to call these NumPad shortcuts. And in the fragment, I want to select Key Mappings and make sure that Import Resulting File is off, and I'm going to OK that. And if I go to the system menu and select the command to open user configs folder, I should see that my newly created CFG file is in there. And if I double click that to open it in my text editor, I can see that all it should contain are the new amends that I've made to the shortcuts. So by having these little config fragments in my user configs folder means that these settings that I've customized will always survive any updates to Modo. So it's a really useful way of configuring Modo to your own liking. And I suggest that whenever you save a little config fragment like this, that you also save a copy of it to somewhere like Dropbox so that whenever you install Modo on a new machine, you can simply download them again and have all of your customizations exactly as you like them. I hope you found this little tip useful and thank you very much for watching.